rode my bicycle down there. Larry the Sims is a second-generation waterman on the Chesapeake Bay. For more than half a century, he earned his living by pulling crabs and catching fish from these waters. When I was a young man, and 50 years ago, when I, did, I fished up the bay with one of my uncles shad fishing. In the spring of the year, we'd dip water out of the bay and use it, put it in her in her water bottle. We washed her dishes, made her coffee, and all that stuff. But water was water was fresh in the spring, and it was clean. You wouldn't dare do that today. You know, you don't even want to get it on you today. You know, so. 50 years, that's how much that's changed. So what happened? It's it just more and more population, got more and more sewage, more and more that's not treated. Waterman Chucky White, whose father worked the bay before him, agrees with Sims. Right it's, it's sad that they, you know, that they're willing to just throw it all away. You know, and I'm not talking about what I do for a living, I'm talking about the Chesapeake Bay. Both men work from the nearby seafood town of Rock Hall, Maryland, where town manager Ronnie Fithian says that several factors come into play. Diseases coupled with pollution and, and overcrowding and things, I mean, it's just, uh, it's just a multitude of things that help put this business out of business. And, you know, when I go wash my car and the soap suds runs down the, the ditch, I'm, I'm part of the problem. And, and just everybody together the, the pay is just not able to flush all that. And time is uh, development and growth and pollutants from all angles. Um, no one person, I think, is entirely to blame. It's just the whole world. So how did it get to this point? It's just the public not wanting to spend the money to do it the right way. You can do it the right way, and you can have a nice, clean bay, have all these people and all that. But everybody wants to do it the cheap way, want to cut corners. They can't keep dumping and dumping into it, you know? But again, with a lot of this stuff happened when they put those wastewater treatment plants in. The watermen say many sewage treatment plants do not remove enough nitrogen from the waste. And many experts agree that elevated nitrogen levels threaten both water quality and aquatic life. Both Sims and Fithian say they feel like a figure from America's past dramatized in this public service announcement, facing the same hardships of a crumbling environment. Some people have a deep, abiding respect for the natural beauty that was once this country. You ever see that advertisement years ago we had on TV? He was an Indian, and he had the tears coming down his cheek, that's me. People can stop it. But there is hope for the Bay, and Sim says that it can be saved. Well, I would tell the people to talk to their politicians and tell them they're willing to pay a little extra money to upgrade their sewage treatment plants. But adds that our present course requires changes. Yeah, if you, if, if, if you had a magic wand and you could stop all the dumb stuff we're doing to it right now, in 18 months it'd be, it'd be like it was 50 years ago. They get bounced back quick, but you got to stop doing what you're doing. Fithian echoes the dark forecast. I think, in all honesty, there are some little bit of lights at the end of the tunnel that that uh, hopefully things will turn around, but it'll never be like it used to be. From the waters of the Chesapeake Bay off the shore of Rock Hall, Maryland, Arasir Basadi, VOA News.